And right now I'd like to welcome Congresswoman Mimi Walters. And Mimi is, of course, the representative for this district, the 45th district. Great to have you on. Good to see you oh, again. Thanks for having me back. I always enjoy coming to talk with you. Uh, it's wonderful. And uh, you, of course, have a history with this community and the state of California. Now, were you an assembly person or senator? I was in both. I served okay. for 10 years in the California State Legislature. I was in the Assembly and the Senate. Okay. I, I couldn't remember which, probably because you were both. <laughs> yeah. But it's great to have you here today. And uh, we're going to get into a few topics right away because I know you're kind of pressed for time. And something that really uh, is, uh, concerns this community for obvious reasons is veterans, how they're taken yeah. care of. And, uh, you know, we, we, we've heard in the news uh, really over the last several years that the care for them and the resources that they have in VA reform. Yeah. So I was really privileged to have the opportunity to meet the Southland Honor Flight veterans who came to uh -huh. Washington, D.C. last month and I met them at the World War II Memorial, and there were veterans that were from World War II as well as the Korean War, and some of them were even from Laguna Woods. Oh, and nice. And I got the opportunity to talk with them and listen to their stories and their concerns, and one of their biggest concerns was that they don't want to be forgotten. I mean, these were men who have sacrificed their lives for us, mm -hmm. for our freedom, and we need to honor that. And one way we need to be sure that we um, honor the men and women who are fighting for our freedom is to make sure that they have the care that they need uh, when they return from mm -hmm. uh, their military duties. And um, the VA, as mm -hmm. we know, for several years was not providing the care that, uh, that we need to make sure that they have. And um, I am proud to say that we've been reforming the VA. Uh, we've been uh, making sure that our veterans have the, the access to the care that they need. And if they can't get it at their local VA, that we have community centers where they can go to make sure that they get the care in a timely fashion. Uh, this is one of the high priorities of Congress, is to make sure that we continue to take care of our veterans and, and make sure that we honor their service. And uh, we have to make sure uh, we don't let them down. Yeah, because um, unfortunately one of the biggest growing elements in the homeless is, of course, their veterans. And right. in many cases there's a lot of different reasons, uh, of course, what they went through and all. Mm -hmm. And um, they may not know how to go get the resources. and. Uh, or don't have the ability. Right, right, and so we have to make sure that we're there for them and that they get the access to the care. Um, it's our duty mm -hmm. and uh, I am very confident that we are gonna continue to see big improvements with the VA. And one of those uh, improvements came last year with the VA Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act, right? That's true. Um, we now have uh, protections in place for those people who work for the VA that are exposing the bad actors and we're able to now um, uh, get rid of people who are not serving uh, in the VA, serving our military men and women the way that they should be. So there's an opportunity now for us to um, clean house, if you will, yeah. with those people that aren't serving um, the veterans to the best of their ability. All right, now let's move on to tax reform. And uh, of course, I, I know this people this year, uh, I came across some folks and you know they did their 2017 uh -huh. tax. They go, where's the reform? No, no, no. It's starting for the tax year 2018. Right, right, right. But I think a lot of people thought, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So tell us kind of a brief overview about the tax reform and how it may or may not help seniors. Well, first of all, um, when I've been in the community, it's been wonderful to talk with people who have said to me, oh my gosh, I'm getting more money mm -hmm. back in my paycheck. I didn't realize that. Thank you so much. So people are starting to see the effects mm -hmm. of um, tax reform right now mm -hmm. and some of them have even said you know I went to do my taxes with my accountant my accountant had told me if tax reform was in place right now from last year if it had been retroactive I would have gotten more money back yeah so those are some of the positive things that I think people are feeling um, and also we're seeing a lot of people's 401ks are increasing as well because of tax reform mm -hmm. um, I think we also have seen that the economy is doing much better than it had been doing. We right. were very surprised that many businesses were going to be giving bonuses to their employees and increasing their benefits. Right. Um, yeah. Disney is yes. one, um, yeah. you know, a, a local um, company here who uh, gave a lot of bonuses to their employees. So that was another positive effect. Um, we have um, people who have kids now are um, going to be able to have a um, larger deduction for child, mm -hmm. for their children, so that uh, is going to help younger families as well. But I think the security, especially for the seniors who have retirement accounts, 
who are um, making sure that they have to have that money um, on a monthly basis from the retirement accounts, we're seeing that increase, and that's going to be very beneficial to the seniors. Yeah, and one of the things um, uh, that is also helping that we that should not go unnoticed is small business. And even around in this community, there are a lot of small businesses mm -hmm. here. And, you know, small businesses struggle, let's face it. Yeah. So to have reform coming in, and uh, that can help them as yeah, well. Yeah, we are seeing more small businesses expanding now and creating more jobs than ever before. Uh, that's one of been, been one of the big benefits to tax reform. Um, and you even have not only small businesses, but large companies like, like Apple, who um, is putting $340 billion back into America and creating 20,000 right. more jobs. That is all because of tax reform. So we are seeing the economy moving, more people are gonna be put back to work. We have the lowest levels of unemployment in decades. Jobless claims are down um, to almost a 50 year low right now. So these are all the benefits we're seeing because of tax reform. Yeah, you, you did bring up a, a good point because I remember Tim Cook, CEO of Apple, said yeah. this would not have happened had this not gone through of the money they're gonna bring back from Mm -hmm. overseas right yeah and I, listen I'm a mom of four and I've got two kids that have already graduated from college and are in the workforce I've got two that are getting ready to graduate next weekend and um, they're looking for jobs and this is going to be an environment for young people a much better environment for young people to get a job than several years ago and that's really important to make sure that these young people have jobs yeah now here's a subject that is um, really in the news right now this is of course the addiction to opioids mm -hmm. And I have mentioned um, more than once that this is really a bipartisan issue. Mm -hmm. And I even said it was the one thing that uh, a year and a half ago during, the, uh, during the, the elections and primaries that President Trump and Bernie Sanders both agreed on. Correct. correct. Yeah. I agree. The one thing maybe they agreed on. But this is, um, this is becoming an epidemic for a variety of reasons. Yeah, it is. And it's something that I think the public is really starting to make, um, become aware of. Um, listen, there's a place for medication. We all need to have medication uh, to help us heal, mm -hmm. but we have to be careful to not uh, abuse it. And I think one of the issues we need to educate the public about is first of all, you know, moms and dads, grandma and grandparents, that medication that's in your medicine cabinet, we need to be careful to make sure that the young people don't get their hands on it. Mm -hmm. Because one of the abuses we've been seeing is from the young people thinking, it's okay, I can take medication from my mom and dad because a doctor prescribed it. And they don't understand that that can be very harmful. So we've seen young people um, die because of opioid mm -hmm. abuse as well. So it's a matter of education. Um, it's a matter of making sure that um, uh, Congress provides the resources uh, to make sure that we have mechanisms in place and laws in place to make sure that not too many pills get into this to get into the system into the wrong hands and I sit on um, energy and commerce committee and we actually had um, we've been having hearings on the opioid crisis we just mm -hmm. um, passed some legislation uh, to help give the resources that's needed to make sure mm -hmm. that we curb this crisis and it is something that Congress is focused on. And as you mentioned, uh, the president is very focused on this issue because we need to make sure the public is aware so that people um, uh, take care when they're, when they're taking their medication. And uh, you know, one thing I, I, I wanted to mention on that is of course the, um, in fact, even the, the federal government is becoming on a little bit more on board on the use of cannabis of, mm -hmm. as a safer alternative that's still being looked at. A lot of yeah. states have adopted yeah. to it. But I've even seen where the president has kind of backed off. Backed off meaning, okay, I see, I, I can see the benefit of this backing off that. Yeah. Way. So medical marijuana does have a place yeah. in in our society. I think if you talk to people that have used it and how much it's helped them, I think it is a discussion that we need to have and, and mm -hmm. to move towards that. It gets a little concerning though when you have marijuana for everybody to right, right. smoke. And yes. I know that there's a movement. Um, uh, throughout the country to make marijuana legal, uh, that's a little bit more of a difficult issue. Yeah, that's yeah, of course. Now, San Onofre, and mm -hmm. as we know, um, there's a lot of, uh, of spent nuclear fuel there, mm -hmm. and people are concerned, rightly so, as far as uh, what can be done about that. Because on one hand, we would we, meaning the area around here, would yeah. like to see it move somewhere. Right. But of course, the people who live in the areas 
where that might be moved to don't necessarily want it. Yeah. It's, a, it's a difficult situation. It is a difficult situation, and Yucca Mountain in Nevada seems to be the place where nuclear spent fuel um, could be deposited uh, in a safe manner. Mm -hmm. uh, the scientists have done all the work on it. Uh, of course, it gets very political, as you can imagine. Yeah. Uh, Yucca Mountain in Nevada, there's people in Nevada that don't want it to uh, spent nuclear sure. fuel to be there. But in the meantime, until we can get Yucca Mountain completely ready, we have to have interim storage. We have to move this uh, spent fuel someplace so that we get it uh, um, out of our community. Mm -hmm. And so Congress is looking at um, interim uh, storage right now. We're working towards legislation that will provide a place for us to uh, be able to put this spent nuclear fuel. And uh, it's an issue that's been uh, before Congress for many, many years, and I'm You're hoping right. we get it resolved. Okay, yeah, it's, again, it's, nobody wants it around them, so it's a difficult issue. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to uh, wildfires. Of course, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, we, we've seen the devastation in California, uh -huh. and I think it was either yesterday or the day before, uh, the governor uh, of California actually signed a, I don't know what you would call it, but a kind of a widening of helping to alleviate wildfires mm -hmm. by taking care of the brush. Uh, I think he went to 500,000 acres, or I don't know the to exact- To clear through the to brush. To clear, okay. yeah, that was just, um, from what I understand on the news today, yeah. he approved that yesterday. Because that's, that's preventive maintenance. Yeah, preventive maintenance, And that's something that we yeah. have to do a better job in the yeah. state of California, because once a wildfire starts, and if you're in an area that's got a lot of mm -hmm. brush, you know, it just lights up. And so we have to have uh, preventive maintenance when it comes to our forests to make sure that when we have fires that we can um, get rid of them quickly mm -hmm. and put them out quickly. Uh, we obviously saw the devastation in Northern California uh, this uh, past year and um, locally here yeah. as well as in Orange County. And um, I was able to secure uh, money in the budget to make sure that people who were victims of the wildfire in Orange County mm -hmm. um, have the resources that they need uh, in order to rebuild their lives quickly. Uh, what about uh, getting more equipment here more permanently? I think um, certain times of the year we actually lease stuff out of Canada, those super scoopers, and yeah. some people have said, why don't we just have these for our own, even if they're sitting on several months of the year just not being used, yeah. but is that something that we should be looking at? Yeah, I've talked to the Orange County Fire Authority um, leaders mm -hmm. about these issues, and again, it, it's, it's a function of cost, and it's a function of money, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a dialogue that's been ongoing. Uh, we want to make sure that our uh, men and women who are fighting our fires um, have the tools that they need at their disposal to make sure that they can put these fires out as quickly as possible. All right, now I know uh, the Congresswoman has to um, get off to something else, but I have one more thing. Flu season, of course, we're out of that now, but we've seen how devastating it was this year. Mm -hmm. And of course, every year, uh, which I did not realize, uh, when you have the, um, you go ahead and you get the vaccine, mm -hmm. I didn't realize that it's about a 30% that they got it right each year because yeah, yeah. The, the flu can morph even during the season. Correct. But you still need to get it. Correct. So the Centers for D Disease Control, known as CDC, yeah. every year comes up with a vaccine for the flu virus. Mm -hmm. And what they do is they try to predict which, yeah. strand, mm -hmm. which strain yeah. of, um, of flu is going to be most prevalent that year. And it's scientists yeah. work. It, it's very difficult um, to get it accurate. Yeah. And so unfortunately, the last couple years, um, the CDC has not gotten it accurate. Mm -hmm. And that's where we've seen um, the, the, the virus has not, I mean, excuse me, the flu vaccination has not worked as mm -hmm. well as it should. Uh, what we're working on right now is to get a universal vaccine done so that we can get to the core of the flu virus. Okay. And having a universal vaccine will then help take care of some of these problems. And we um, are, every year, by the way, the Energy and Commerce Committee um, reviews what happened the year before in the flu vac and, and with the flu season. And so we're trying to make sure they have the resources so that the scientists can develop a proper vaccine. All right, very good. I appreciate you coming on today. Thank you. Good to see you again, yeah, as always. Yeah, good to see you as well. And I want to mention that for the Congresswoman's uh, government website, uh, I do have it on the screen, walters.house.gov. And if you forget that, if you just put Mimi Walters, 45th District, 
it'll come up. That's I always right. tell people nowadays, if you search for something, it'll usually come up. Exactly. Yeah, it's the Love Google. <laughs> yes. Good to see you. Good to see you Thank too. Thank you very Thanks much. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back.